Hi guys, welcome to Music Theory Grade 1, Part 1, Clefs and Compass. Okay, I just want to begin by saying that I think it's really fantastic that you're interested in music theory. It's a really exciting subject. And you'll see, if you understand music theory, it will improve your practical musicianship immensely. Okay, let's begin. We're going to start with clefs. We find clefs at the beginning of all music. Clefs give the notes on the staff meaning as they determine the pitch of the notes. In grade one, you need to know two clefs, the treble clef, also known as the G clef, and the bass clef, also known as the F clef. This is the treble clef. The treble clef is used for high parts. You'll see, it's used for the right hand of the piano and any high voices or instruments. This is the bass clef. The bass clef is used for low parts. It's used for the left hand of the piano and any low voices or instruments. Oh, and these five lines are called the staff or stave. We use the staff to write music on. Every line and space is a different note, depending on the clef, of course. Next, we're going to learn about compass. Compass is really the range of notes on the staff. In grade one, we need to learn these carefully. And I know it seems really difficult, but you'll see, it becomes easier and easier the more you practice. We use what we call the musical alphabet. This is seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And these letters are repeated in that sequence. You can see the treble clef and the bass clef. Now the lowest note written here in the treble clef is called middle C. The highest note written here in the bass clef is also called middle C and this is exactly the same note. Middle C is a low note in the treble clef and a high note in the bass clef. It is called middle C because it is found in the middle of the keyboard. It's this note in the treble clef and this note in the bass clef. You can see that the bass clef is responsible for the low note and the treble clef is responsible for the high note. Also, you can see that we have some notes that are actually above or below the staff. These are on what we call ledger lines. Now, we have to really try hard to remember all these notes. And an easy way to remember them is by separating them into the notes on the lines and the notes in the spaces. The line notes in the treble clef can be remembered by every good boy deserves fun and the notes in the spaces spell face. We can see that here. The line notes are E, G, B, D and F. Every good boy deserves fun. And in the spaces, F, A, C, E, face. In the same way, the notes in the bass clef can be remembered. The line notes can be remembered, good boys do fine always. And the notes in the spaces, all cows eat grass. On the lines, G, B, D, F, A, good boys do fine always. And on the spaces, A, C, E and G, all cows eat grass. Now, you won't have to always remember these in order to work out the notes. You'll see, the more you practice, the easier it will get to just recognize them without even using these little tricks. Okay, clefs and compass. What have we learned? What do we need to remember? Well, you will need to be able to recognize both treble and bass clef. You'll actually need to be able to write these as well, so maybe try practicing to write the treble and the bass clef. In the treble clef, You'll need to be able to write and recognize the notes from the A below middle C up to the C above the staff. I've given you an example of all these notes below. In the bass clef, you'll need to be able to write and recognize the notes from the C below the staff up to the E above the staff. They are also below. Now guys, please, please, please always remember to look at the clef of an exercise before you start. Because as you can see, 
the notes in the treble clef are very different to the notes in the bass clef.